My parents got COVID and I'd cow to feel about it. My parents, 51 MF, went to the Notre Dame game last weekend and met up with an old college friend. Wednesday my dad had a slight fever, 100.3 but said the fever broke and they still went on the plane to head back to our state. Today we found out the friend tested positive for COVID. Obviously my brother, 21, and I, 18, are mad at this, why couldn't they have waited an extra couple days to get tested? What's wrong with waiting a little more to get a positive or negative test? We don't live with them currently, so we're not at risk of getting infected by them, but when my brother called them and asked if they needed anything and offered our services to run errands while they quarantine, my mom replied that she already went out and picked up some groceries. I'm just feeling very angry and upset right now. We're in the middle of a pandemic and you get sick, you don't have to have mad hops to jump to conclusions about what happened. Now, my dad is reporting symptoms of the wheezing cough and sounds a bit raspy over the phone. I think that more than angry I'm scared. My dad has several risk factors and we've talking about how if he gets it, there is a chance that he could die from it. He's older, he's overweight and he has high blood pressure. My mom seems fine but I'm really worried about what might happen. Reddit, I'm not sure what to do. I know people don't want to hear you tell them that what they're doing is wrong, and I don't want to push them away. But how do I get through my hurt feelings at their actions and carelessness in this scenario? My parents didn't even let me go away for college this year. Plus, they were planning on a nine-day trip to Miami next week, a global hotspot. I'm just so frustrated at what my life is turning into. I understand COVID fatigue. But this is really unacceptable. I just don't know what to do next. Edit, please stop telling my parents to go fuck themselves. I still love them even though they make mistakes, they do the same for me. I don't think they realized how serious COVID is, especially at their age. Treat them accordingly. Ask if they have an up-to-date will. Ask where they keep their major paperwork. Do they have a life insurances you should know about? Pension? Who is executor of the estate in case both of them die? Is the house fully paid or are any monthly payments left? Intensive care and the medical aftermath could be fucking expensive. How much of it is covered by their insurance? Are they prepared to sell their house? In case they become a breathing vegetable at what point are you allowed to turn off life support get that in writing ask them to prepare but not activate yet a power of attorney for you and your brothers in case both get permanently disabled and are not mentally capable to care for themselves in that case any care homes they would prefer how would they prefer to pay for long-term care since it could be tens of thousands per month in case they die any wishes for their funeral tell them you love them both and since they spread it just by breathing tell them to call you for every matter they need to do outside of their house unless they don't care about killing or permanently harming other people this is such amazing advice not only does it handle all the practical stuff that you'd need to know if the worst did happen but having this conversation with them in such an emotionless way may also hammer in the possible consequences of their actions in a way that advice anger or disappointment probably wouldn't. This pandemic is really highlighting who failed science in high school. At this point, the only people I feel sorry for are those who lost their jobs and people who get sick from doing their jobs. I might be missing a few categories, but most everyone else is taking an informed risk. If your parents did that here in Australia, their faces would have been plastered all over the media. It's crazy the differences in the way other countries are handling the pandemic but it is what it is. Your olds are irresponsible but they are just a cog in the workings of a runaway train at this point and they know it. They don't care. Choose your battles, tell them you're disappointed and move on if they don't concede. They may have just inadvertently shortened their own lives so punishing them probably won't make you feel any better. They don't sound like they care about their own well-being let alone others. You really should contact the airline slash CDC because they could have infected hundreds of people and contact tracing needs to be done. I'm sorry you have to parent your parents. Edit, also missed the part about their Miami trip. Jesus Christ, please call the authorities so they are made to stay home. This is insane. 
did they tell the CDC, the entire plane has to quarantined. Anyway, I assume they have acted like this their entire life. Unless your dad gets really sick, nothing is going to change them. Don't waste your breath, if you aren't going to ream them about their lack of empathy for other humans. I know too many that died from this disease. You know they didn't tell the CDC. My, 36F, boyfriend, 30 meters, asked me to make my Instagram private so his ex would stop creeping on me. My boyfriend says his ex of 2 years was creeping on my Instagram account and sending him long, agitated messages about me. He asked me to make my profile private so she couldn't see my photos anymore. Is it reasonable for me to ask to see what she said about me? I assume she saw in my profile that I'm married, I'm openly poly, my husband knows I have a boyfriend and my boyfriend knows I'm happily married, and was warning him about me but that's just a wild guess. I did ask him casually what she said and he just said she's just being crazy but now I really want to know what she said. Also is it reasonable to ask why he hasn't gone no contact with her or blocked her if she's this aggressive and clearly not over him? You don't need to set yours to private if you don't want to. He needs to deal with his own ex. It's fine if he needed to give you a heads up to block her or something, but this is weird and her reactions are not your problem. Yeah I don't really want to go private so I'll tell him he needs to deal with her. Also is it reasonable to ask why he hasn't gone no contact with her or blocked her if she's this aggressive and clearly not over him? 100% this. This is his problem and he isn't taking the necessary steps to address it. It's your relationship, so you need to decide about whether the drama is worth it. My fiancé's ex and my ex's fiancé both accidentally liked an old photo of mine within the same week which was super weird, but I still haven't made my account private. I don't share anything I wouldn't want an employer to see, and it's not my job to police the social media of other grown women. If they don't wanna see it, don't look. I would have an adult discussion with your boyfriend that his ex isn't really your problem, and if he doesn't like her reactions, he can address it with her, woman shrugging, Emo it's the best when he blocks her slash doesn't have contact anymore and you could consider making your account private. Or you block her too. I was in a similar situation and I did make my account private, she still requests to follow me from random accounts all the time. He also deleted his accounts altogether and changed his phone number so she couldn't contact him at all. So that felt like a reasonable compromise to me. If he's not going to go no contact I can't see how it's fair to ask you to change the way you use social media. My daughter wants to become transgender but I don't think she should. My daughter 15 is a lesbian but this isn't an issue. I still love her and I don't really care who she dates as long as she's safe. Recently she came to my wife and I about going to a doctor and talking about starting some type of hormones therapy. She want to become a transgender. We said we would think about it and my wife and I talked about it. My wife thinks we should go to a doctor and just ask about it and if they feel it's safe then we go along with it. I'm thinking no because I don't want her to regret this at a young age. I also think it would be irresponsible to allow her to do this at a young age. We're really at a standstill right and can't decide. My daughter asked about it again and my wife told her she has to convince me. So much for us being on a team. Anyway any advice and personal experiences to something like this would be nice. Take them, your kid, to a therapist who specializes in gender dysphoria. This genuinely would have saved my mental health when I first came out having no support from my family ruined me. Someone will not put her on hormones without multiple therapy sessions and a gender dysphoria diagnosis. Teenagers do not get any surgeries until they turn 18 at the very least, often it takes into their 20s. I'm 18, and I am not on any hormones and have had no surgeries. I've only cut my hair, I bind my chest, 
and I do voice training by myself to make my voice deeper. Allow your child to socially transition in the meantime, if they feel like it. Get them a haircut. Get masculine clothing. If they want to, help them change their name or find a nickname to go by. Ask for their pronouns. I want to stress that you need to find a trans-friendly therapist, one who specializes in trans issues. When I was 15, I went to a religious therapist, and I can only say that I came out worse than I went in. I would also recommend reading books by trans authors about their experiences. If you would like a book about what it's like to be trans, problems that can affect trans people, act. I would recommend Trans Bodies, Trans Selves, edited by Laura Erickson Schroth. It's very long, but it is informative. I would also recommend The Transgender Child, a handbook for families and professionals. It's also a bit long, but focuses on the parent-child relationship more so than what it's like to be transgender. I came out at 15 and socially transitioned over a period of time, by the time I was an adult I realized that transitioning was not what I needed in life. If I had been allowed to do anything beyond changing my social interactions, I would have regretted it immensely despite the fact that I still actively suffer from gender dysphoria. It wasn't for me. It's not for everyone. Speak to a medical and a mental health professional, and let your child speak to them as well. They're much better suited to help guide all of you. Yep, it is absolutely key for any transition to be monitored by a disinterested mental health professional. Disinterested, not uninterested, in the sense that you want someone who has no horse in the race other than the well-being of their patient. They don't want the patient to be trans, they don't want the patient to not be trans. Have you guys gone to a psychologist? Honestly, I don't think there's any advice internet people can give you other than go to psychologists. Get one for your child, go to one for yourself. Nothing about this is easy. It's a very confusing time for your whole family. But professionals can help all of you work out how to navigate this new stage in your child's life. I don't think you can just go to a doctor and, if he's convincing enough, start the operation. That's not how it works. This is a long road and you don't want any shortcuts. I think your best choice is to talk with your daughter, slash son. What should you call him slash her? How do they feel? Why do they want hormone therapy? How certain are they? Do they realize the consequences? How does she imagine the transition happening? Does she want more than hormone therapy? What does hormone therapy do? What kind of hormones are they? Would she ever want children of her own? Beard or no beard? Surely you can think of a lot of details and questions you could ask to at least show her your considerations. Perhaps you can explain why you're reluctant. Should make a good start.